What's going on YouTube? It's United Gamer 101 here and welcome to the NPC Armor Showcase and Location Guide. I will show you the armor together, the pieces stats, and then tell you how to get it. Many of these armors I have made specific and separate guides for, so if you're looking for them, you can find them in the description below. But without further ado, let us begin. First we have Lucatil of Mirror. I have a full guide in the description below, but the basics are you will first find her in No Man's Wharf. When you find her there, speak to her and then you will be able to summon her for 4 boss fights. In 3 out of 4 of those boss fights, when you summon her, defeat the boss and make sure she is alive at the end of the fight. When all this happens, you will later find her in Aldia's Keep. Speak to her and she will give you her entire armor set and her greatsword. The four boss fights include the Flexile Sentry, the Lost Center, the Rotten, and Mitha the Baneful Queen. After defeating three out of four of those with her alive, she will give you this set. Lucatil is a very beneficial character to help you with boss fights, and after doing all this, you will receive a silver trophy or achievement. Next, we have Benhart of Jugo or Hugo. Please do forgive me if I pronounce names wrong in this because it is bound to happen. He is very similar to Lucatil of Mirror's questline, as you will have to defeat three out of four boss fights with him alive and summoned as well. He starts off in shaded woods in front of the petrified pyromancy lady. As you unpetrify her with a fragrant branch of yore, go back and talk to him. This will start his quest line. Then you will see him at these four boss fights. The Prowling Magus, the Looking Glass Knight, the Giant Lord, and the Throne Defender and Throne Watcher right before Nashandra the last boss fight. His armor is heavier, and his weapon resembles the Moonlight Greatsword, although it doesn't come with the special effects and high intelligence build. Alright, next we have Mild-Mannered Pate. You will first come in contact with him in the Forest of Fallen Giants. This is the first NPC that you can summon to help you fight other bosses. Summon him and defeat the last giant boss in the Forest of Fallen Giants. If you do not want to do this, you can kill him and talk to the Forest of Fallen Giants merchant. When you talk to her, you will see his entire armor set there to purchase. Next we have Crichton the Wanderer, pretty much the rival of Mild Mannered Pate. This one is a little bit more difficult to find his armor set and I recommend watching my guide that I have on my channel. You will need to talk to him in three locations. You will first come in contact with him in Huntsman Cops. He is located directly beside the third bonfire. Although the twist is there is a key you must find. I recommend looking at my guide to show you because it will show the exact location of that key. After you unlock it, exhaust his dialogue and talk to him all the way through. Then as you come across shaded woods, you will go up to the bonfire and he will be at the top of the stairs to the right. Talk to him there and then lastly you will come to Brightstone Cove the, where the boss fight Dukes de Freja is and there you will see him fighting mild mannered Pate. Side with Crichton by killing Mild Mannered Pate. When you kill Pate, you can still buy his armor at the Merchant in the Force of Fallen Giants. After you kill Pate, talk to Crichton, and then he will give you his entire armor. Now, according to the strategy guide, he has like an axe type weapon, and he doesn't give you that. I just put that in there because it matches the model in the strategy guide. Thank you. 
Next we have Cartographer Kale. You will first find him laying down in the Forest of Fallen Giants. This is how you get the house key. When you get the house key, you will make your way back to Majula and go to the mansion right beside the giant pit. I show all of this in my Navalin Assassination questline guide, so I will link that in the description for this armor. It is in the middle of that guide, so I'm sorry I didn't make a specific armor guide because it's nothing really too much. But once he returns back to his house, there you will see him lighting torches on this map. When you light all eight torches, which you're pretty much at the end of the game, after the ancient dragon, talk to him. He will give you his armor set. Not this sword, I just put a little sword that matches his model in the strategy guide. And you also get a silver trophy or achievement. Next we have the Drang Lake set. Yes, the one back in the Forest of Fallen Giants, but you do not find a helmet, which is quite interesting. You find this entire set, besides the helmet, in the Forest of Fallen Giants after the Pursuer boss fight, the second time you encounter him. I already made a guide for that, so go check it out. But then you come across the Ancient Dragon and receive this key. When you receive that, you can now go in the Tree of Giants back in the Forest of Fallen Giants. You see those big trees all across that world, and now you can go inside those and relive memories. You come across Captain Drummond. He is a captain back from a long time ago memory that wears the Drang Lake set. Now, I will be making a guide for that really soon, so probably right after this video because I already have the recordings for it. So, if you want to know where to locate him and exactly what to do, I recommend checking that out in the description below. Awesome armor set, I wore it through almost the entire game. Next, we have the Blue Sentinel Targray set. This is acquired from becoming rank 3 in the Blue Sentinel's Covenant. To become rank 3, you will have to be playing co-op with people and be summoned and help them defeat their goal or achieve their goal and defeat that many bosses 500 times. This will give you a token of fidelity. You will give that to him and you have to do that 500 times. I recommend killing him and going and talking to the merchant in the Forest of Fallen Giants. If you talk to her after killing him, you will see his armor set there just like the other ones and then you can buy it that way. Unless you really want this covenant, that is your choice, but that is 500 times, that is a lot to do. Next we have Tichy Grinset, the leader of the Blood Covenant, or the Recruiter. To get his armor, you will have to also reach rank 3 of his covenant. Yet again, 500 times to do this. Not to be summoned and helped, but to invade and win that many PvPs. That will take a long time. And honestly, not that worth it for me. So, I killed him. That is how I'm getting most of these armors. But, I went to New Game Plus right after, so he respawned. I mean, he doesn't give you the best armor and the best weapon in the game, so if you're not really dying to have it and you really want to say the Covenant, just be without it. And if you don't care about the Covenant, you can kill him and go talk to the Merchant of the Forest of Fallen Giants. Yet again, she is really important for a lot of these NPC armors. This armor does increase the number of souls acquired from defeating enemies, but there's a lot of other armors out there that do the same thing. Next we have the Bellkeeper Covenant set, and now this one is a little bit different. Yet again, you do have to reach rank 3, but if you cannot kill the Bellkeeper and talk to the Force of Fallen Giants Merchant. So you actually have to reach rank 3, and that is why this one took me the longest to get. 
to get rank three, you have to be summoned as a gray invader to defend the bell. You just got to put the ring on after joining the covenant and then win a hundred times. Luckily, this was not 500. Otherwise, I would not be making this video right now because I would still have invasions to go and win. It didn't really take that long. They summon me quite often, and I don't have good internet or anything. So, I mean, it shouldn't take that long if you want this armor set. But this one is definitely the one that took me the longest to get. Next, we have the Merchant in the Iron Keep. Now, you don't get this armor from him. You actually get it from the Forest of Fallen Giants Merchant again. I just wanted to show it off because it, you know, it matches his armor. So, it technically can count as an NPC armor. Although, you don't achieve it by getting it from them. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to count it. I just put it in here just in case anyone was wondering on where to get it. Next we have Gavlin Wheel, Gavlin Deal. The lonesome Gavlin that is first found in No Man's Wharf. To get his armor is not by him either. This one you actually get from enemies. The Gurum enemies, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, that are located in the doors of Pharaohs. It didn't take me long. The only thing that I do need to tell you is this great axe that I'm using, you do get from Lonesome Gavlin. You need to buy 15,000 worth of souls from him and then hit his talk selection. He will just flat out give you his great axe. I love Gavlin. He's one of my favorite NPCs. He's just funny to me. Great merchant guy, but this is how you get his complete armor set. Next we have Shrade of Olaphus, the petrified sorcerer in the Lost Bastille. An excellent NPC in this game. He trades boss souls for weapons. To get his armor, you need to trade him four boss souls and then talk to him. When you talk to him, he will give you his armor. He does not give you this staff, though. This is the staff he is using, though, so I put it on here. This is the Staff of Wisdom, an excellent intelligence build staff. It has an S scaling in intelligence. It can be found in the Dragon Shrine. I have a guide, actually, for his armor and for his staff on my channel, so be sure to check those out as well. Next we have Lycia of Lindelt that you first come in contact with in Hyde's Tower of Flame. She is the faith build or miracle seller of this game. To get her armor and her chime that I actually do not show in this and I'm really sorry about that, you will need 30 faith or higher. When you get that, just go and talk to her and she will give you her entire set. If you can't find her in Hyde's Tower of Flames or like she disappeared, she returns in Majula where you actually enter to go to Hyde's Tower of Flame. She is also the switch to go to Huntsman Cop, so that is where she is now located.
Next, we have Falcon the Outcast, the Hex Magic Seller. To find him, he is first located and permanently located in Huntsman Cops. You will see him sitting in a chair, but to talk to him, you will need your intelligence at 10 and your faith at 10. Once you get your intelligence and faith both to 20, then talk to him and he will give you the Sunset Staff and his robes. If you don't want to do this, you can kill him and go talk to the merchant in the Forest of Fallen Giants. The Sunset Staff can also be found in the same chest to find the Dark Mask and Aldia's Keep. Watch out, it is a mimic, but it's directly beside the first bonfire there. The main unique or useful thing about this armor set is the helmet because it increases the number of casts for each spell. Not by a lot, but it is useful in the game and PvP. Next we have Royal Sorcerer Navlin and his Chaos Set. He is first located and permanently located in Aldia's Keep. Now this one is one of the most complex NPCs, but I have an entire guide for his questline located on my channel. You will also receive the Dispelling Ring, Simpleton Spice, Forbidden Sun Pyromancy, which is excellent and Unleashed Magic Spell. After doing his questline and talking to him, he will give you his robes. So be sure to check out that guide if you're wanting to find out exactly on how to get it. Next we have Grave Warden Agdane. He is permanently located in the Undead Crypt right before you get the King's Ring. To get his armor set, you will have to get the King's Ring after the boss fight right beside King Vendrick and then go back and talk to him. He is not using this weapon, but this weapon is a Dark Drift and he gives it to you so I thought I'd show it off. It's pretty neat because it's invisible like. But this is his armor set and it's really easy to get. Last but surely not least is Vingar of Ferosa. I love Vingar. He is one of my favorite NPCs, if not my favorite in this game. I'm not exactly sure why, but I really like him. You first come across him in the Shaded Woods, and it's only his head. Talk to him, exhaust his dialogue. He will be so flattered and just enjoy the conversation so much that he gives you his helmet. He warns you about his body and that if you see it, just run away or avoid it because it will attack. And he tells the truth. After the Duke's Dear Frasia boss fight, the giant armored spider, you will find the bonfire and see the rest of his body. Once you kill it, you will get the rest of his armor. These two blades are what his NPC is carrying. He's dual wielding them and it's the red rusted sword. You can buy it from his shop, so I thought I'd show that off. Vingarl's armor set is one of the armors I use throughout most of the game. It's not too, too heavy. It is right now because I redid my stats with a soul vessel, but it has very good defense in my opinion. I love his armor set. One of my favorite looking as well, but I do recommend getting this because if you get his helmet, you will get a silver trophy or achievement as well.
But that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this armor showcase. If I did miss any, I'm really sorry. The game's been out for about, actually, exactly two weeks as I'm finishing this project off. I loved the game. I have just played all the way through New Game Plus, and I got all of these armors. I've followed the strategy guide on how to get them. Uh, some of the armors, you probably can find what looks similar to it, but these are just mainly the ones that you actually see. And if you guys want to see more armor sets like this one right here, the Looking Glass Knight armor, or perhaps All Boss Armor Showcase, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you would like to see that. Uh, I really enjoyed, you know, finding all these armors for you guys. I was requested this so much. It's unbelievable how much. I still have to go back and do Ben Hart's armor set or specific guide for his because it's actually in multiple locations. But if you did enjoy seeing all these NPC armors and how to get them, I hope I was specific enough for most of them. The ones that I had guides for, I really didn't need to be too specific because you can click the guide to go see how to get it. This is mainly just a showcase just so you can see them all and see the stats and pick out which ones you would like to get. But this has been United Gamer 101 here. Subscribe for more Dark Souls 2 videos. And if you would like to see this boss armors, be sure to let me know. And I'll see you guys in another video.